In the last part, we had discovered that this machine had a bad hard drive. I replaced that. Thank you to Lexmarks 567 for the hard drive. One of them was uh, no good, so I got injured in the process of changing it out the second time. But that's par for the course, you know, sometimes you do have to donate blood to the project. So we're going to go ahead now and install Windows XP. Uh, this thing should boot, and you'll notice there's no pink on the screen now, because it's been on for some time. Ah, that loads the Windows disk, even. That just took a really long time. This uh, CD-ROM drive is not one of the fastest ones out there a little bit. So we'll hit F8. Uh, it's unpartitioned, nothing on there, so we're going to go for it. And it's going to be NTFS, which is perfectly fine. And we'll do it quick, because I'm just going to take it on faith that it works, because the diagnostic said it's okay. So that should format in just a matter of moments. There we are. And setup is examining my disks. Creating list of files to be copied. Oh, it's been a long time. And set up as copying files, so we'll come back later. Did you see where it said professional? Anybody remember that? Where it would say professional or home? We had, like, service pack none. Oh, fuck me. What does that mean? Oh, damn. I don't know. It got one read error off the CD. Let's take a look at the CD. This, that's not even supposed to happen. It's a little dirty. I mean, I'll wipe it off and I guess I'll restart it. What else am I going to do? So I guess I got some off-camera stuff to do. So I will rerun that. That's a little cleaner anyways. I'll rerun it and uh, hopefully it'll work this time. Jeez, that's... What the hell is that error? I've never seen that. Well, I guess uh, I'm going to have some work to do here, so I'll just keep plugging away, and I'll get the fucking thing working. Not going to beat me, that's for damn sure. Okay, take two. Well, that's a lot more like it. There we go. I got another read error, but at a different spot. The first one was at like 5%. This one was at like 50 some odd percent. So, um, hopefully it'll be okay. But it did get into the graphical portion of the install. And that seems to be going very well. So, I love that kind. I never thought I'd be glad to see this screen. But we'll hit next. Whoopsie. I tapped on the touchpad by accident. Our name is underscore. And our organization is definitely underscore. We'll click next. Product key. Fuck gates and windows. Let's see if she likes it. She does. Computer name. I don't remember what I called this thing back in the day. I really wish I did. But I came up with another name. We'll call it Marist because that sticker was on the front of this thing, you know, on the back of the screen there. And we don't need no stinking passwords. It definitely wasn't Marist. So I really don't know. We are in the 516 area code. 
And, uh, oh, that's a problem, isn't it? I need to set that to January 2020. I guess I set that wrong in the BIOS before, but big deal. Uh, time is certainly right. So we'll hit next. And now it's going to install the network. Oh, goody. And I have a surprise. Here's an old box from KD9BWI, who certainly did watch me. I hope you're still watching. I believe he changed his name on the tubes. And in here I have all kinds of cool stuff. I have a USB hub with Ethernet and another USB hub with Ethernet. And I have a flash drive with drivers, a really beat what the hell happened to that thing a beat up netgear oh maybe somebody gave this to me a beat up netgear usb wireless thing i bought these things from china on ebay years ago they're usb to 10 100 it even has a pimple on it for an led which is actually inside the blue thing the problem is i got cheated because these actually only connect at 10 megabits per second not 100 so I got three of those, but they were dirt cheap, I remember. Um, there's a Kensington Compact Flash card that may or may not work, of uh, four gigabytes. Um, what in the hell were these? Oh, I have a timer to attend to. Not sure what these are. It sure doesn't say. Compact Flash... No, it's not that. I think these were like a 1.6 to something else adapter. I don't even remember what the hell those are for. And what else do we have? We have a... Oh, here it is. Good, I've kind of been looking for this. Not really. This is a USB sound card. Makes the most resounding pop when you turn the system on. It's so loud. It's ridiculous. There is a StarTech 2 port USB 2 card that you can add your own power adapter to. A D Link Ethernet card. I believe KB9 DW, KD9BWI sent that to me. And there is another 4 gig compact flash card as well as a PCMCIA to compact flash adapter. But I thought I had an Intel wireless card. And, oh, okay. Yeah, this is not my handwriting. So KD9BWI sent me, I'm trying to remember, sent me that D-Link adapter. A, what brand is this? The StarTech USB 2 card and the Netgear USB thing. So thank you again for that from whenever that was forever ago. But I had an Intel wireless B card and I don't know where it is now. So I have to find that because that was what I wanted to actually show you. And I can't do that because I don't have it here, which kind of sucks. Uh, there's one other place I could think. Actually, there's two other places I could think that it might be. So I will have to take a look for that, and in the meantime, I will pack everything up. That was the drivers for everything. Um, and these, I guess, I'll just put in here, like that. And these will just go separate, and I'll go look for that, and that's still installing. I got what I was looking for. Buffalo Air Station. 54G, a Linksys Wireless G card, and the Intel 802.11b card. This card, if you'll notice, does not have the gold tip at the end. That means this is PCMCIA, where people can't memorize computer industry acronyms. These two were colloquially known as card bus. And you can stick one of these in a card bus slot, but you can't put a card bus card in a PCMCIA slot. So there's that. Now I can finally put all of this crap together. 
and keep it together. But the Intel card, because obviously this thing does not have wireless built in, the Intel card I vaguely seem to remember had an issue where it uh, you could not install Service Pack 2 under Windows XP first. You had to install the drivers for that first in order for it to work. So I'll just load these in for now. Two different packages, that's odd. And that thing, and we'll set that aside. And I keep it all in that nice little box to keep everything together. So the trick is going to be to get that Intel card to work, but I do need to wait for Windows to finish installing. Ooh, that's a good sign. We'll hit OK. It says it's adjusted the screen resolution. Hit OK, and we're off. The Windows XP sound. Nice. So we're all set. We'll hit next and finish, and we should get a desktop eventually. That's fucking brilliant. I love that kind. And take a look. No drivers needed. That's pretty fancy shit right there. Definitely awesome. I think we can bump the screen res to 1024 by 768. For some reason it doesn't come up with that. It's at 800 by 600. 1024 by 768 is the highest this panel does. And there we are. That's its native resolution. We're all set. I'll move that down there. And that is going to wrap up this part. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.